I made a room for this Prime Minister. He's cleaning up your mess, isn't he? No, no. How do you sleep at night? I have asked an apology to my people. Leveling me dictator is wrong. Ethiopia has come a long way in a short time. There's a new peace deal with Eritrea and a new Prime Minister apparently determined to bring accountability for the human rights abuses of the past. My guest this week here in Brussels is his predecessor, Haile Mariam Dessalen, who denied for many years that human rights violations had taken place and whose government locked up many thousands of political prisoners. Has he no shame for the torture that was perpetrated and the lives that were ruined during his time in office? Haile Mariam Dessalen, welcome to Complex On. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Ethiopia has a new prime minister now, Abiy Ahmed, who took over after you resigned last year. He's now received a Nobel Peace Prize, basically for undoing many of the evils of your government and doing what you couldn't do within 100 days. Um, don't you feel something of a failure when you look at what he's done? Not at all, because... Uh, I have done my share to bring this change to happen. And uh, Prime Minister Abiy has not come from a blue moon. It has come from the party which I was residing. Yeah, but he's begun correcting the massive human rights abuses which were a prominent feature of your time and in actually, office. Actually, it is, it is the, my party which started the reform process. And we said uh, the process should be a deep renewal uh, to the country, uh, basically, but also to the party itself. So I think that is a process which yielded Prime Minister Abiy as uh, Prime Minister. So he continued with the process, the, pro, uh, the reform agenda that my party and his party... Well, the, the Nobel in. Committee cited his achievements as lifting the country's state of emergency, granting amnesty to thousands of political prisoners. For years, you always denied there were any. Scrapping media censorship, legalising outlawed opposition groups, dismissing military and civilian leaders suspected of corruption, all the things that you failed to do when you were in office. Uh, by the way, do you know that 95% 90, of the prisoners have been released during my office time? before I left office and before I resigned. So I think what Abiy did was the remaining 5% which has to be released. So the decision was the decision of the party and I took that action before I resigned. How many did you release? Almost all. How many? How many? How many? More than 3,000 or so. Yeah, well there were many more than 3,000 in jail. Yeah, but it's only young people who recently been uh, uh, arrested, been released. But the main political figures which has been arrested, been released during my term before I resigned. In May this year, the Attorney General uh, filed criminal charges against your former intelligence chief, Getachu Asafa, alleging human rights abuses and corruption. He's gone missing now. Do you know where he went? I don't know. I'm not in office now. I have no information. Twenty other people were charged with him. He had served until June 2018. Uh, he had served you as Prime Minister, who were denying that any human rights abuses were being committed. I think you, you lack information. You lack, you lack evidence. Uh, it is my government and my party who admitted that there has been uh, a human rights abuse. You never admitted. You sat year after year in interviews saying, nobody's being mistreated, we have no political prisoners. One after the other, you gave interviews, sitting smiling across at the interviewer, saying, no, everything's fine here, you know, everybody's you, fine. You have to understand uh, the way how our party operates. No, I'm not always... understanding the way you operate, which let, was, let me you lied first. your head off. Let me finish first. If that's the case, then you know that uh, we have a historical uh, issues that we have to understand. That in the first place, this is a party far left. And you know, as uh, in a Deutsche Welle, when there is a communist mentality and when there is a Marxist uh, mentality, there is a centralism where 
you don't utter a word after your party decides on issues, even though you have differences in as a minority. You, you take what the are you saying? You just tell the line whatever it is because you're too cowardly to say anything about what's really going on? I is, think is that your that's, excuse? That's also misplacing. And the whole thing is that uh, we believed in our party and the government that we need to reform our system. We need to bring about changes and we need to democratize our country and because that's a country with a number of interests and there is an introduction of ethnic mobilized politics which is very dangerous and therefore we have, we have decided that we need to go further and deeply in reforming our country. Well, which, which so was I think something that's the main did, reason which why. Which was something you didn't do. Yeah, I did. Well, one of I the first did. thing, well, if you had done that, the Prime Minister, when he came in, Prime Minister Abbey, wouldn't have had to condemn police brutality, pledge to reign in the security services, tackle what he called economic mismanagement, corruption, and rights abuses. All of this stemming from I your time is, in this, office. This is also misplacing because uh, Prime Minister Abbey has not come from a blue moon. He has been Doesn't matter where, where he came he from. Was there with us. He's cleaning up your and mess, isn't he? No, no, it's not, he's not cleaning up his messes. He, he's cleaning he up is, your mess. He's cleaning up the mess you left behind. No, I think this is also misplacing, and I always say that, you know, correctly, this is our party's admission of our collective mistake, and then we has put in place properly. He's done the things that you failed to do. By November last year, dozens of intelligence officers and high-level officials had been arrested, including people from the military-run Metals and Engineering Corporation, METEC, on charges of corruption and human rights it is, abuses. It is you that, never put those charges that, to that, these people. That is the study which I introduced. No, you didn't. Finished. You didn't. I did it. November last year, you weren't in office. I did it. You don't have any evidence. I did it. I, I launched the studies, and in completion of that studies, then action has been taken. The Attorney General said 63 people had been arrested that month, November last year, 27 for corruption, 36 on charges of human rights violation. That included the former head of METEC, Kinfe Dagnu, a Brigadier General, over whom you did nothing. You did nothing about this. I made that study. You lack evidence. I launched the study. I assigned a group of people who studied it's not it. It's not a study. It's charging people with human rights. No, you after, didn't charge them, after you and study, you didn't point you to char- the corruption. You charge people after you study, after concrete evidence. You have a criminal been investigation. And yes, you did that it. investigation has been launched by my time. Local media said huge sums of money were missing from this company, Metec. Where did it go? Let the, let the court decide on it. As Prime Minister, you were supposed to look after the public purse. I did. The military was supposed to follow your orders, and you seem to have failed spectacularly to make them do that. Don't no. you feel any remorse at the crimes you allowed to take place while you were Prime Minister? No, I think I have resigned because I was not able to you know, change dramatically whatever has to come. Because, you were too weak. Beca- no, I, I say... Ineffectual. I have- and actually, I have my own strengths and I have my own weaknesses. And you have to not to look into only the weaknesses, but you have to also see the strengths this country has gone. And you know, you know that my country has been visited during my tenure by six of the seven G7 leaders, and they all announced that this country has been working very hard, a double-digit growth, and economic you know, achievements where we have extricated uh, our people out of poverty. The only country which has achieved uh, seven out of the eight MDGs and awarded by the United Nations by my time. So I think you have to see all those positive things we have achieved. Last November, last November, Mr. Haile Mariam, the Attorney General, Berhanu Tsigaye, said investigators had uncovered serious abuses by security services at secret prisons in the capital and elsewhere. Do you know what your security officers were doing in those secret prisons? I don't don't know those things. Why didn't you know? Did you ever ask? Did you ever visit? 
how can I do? If, if your intelligence doesn't give you information, how can you know? There were plenty of foreign reports that torture was going on, which you denied. And, you no. did, and now you're telling me you didn't know what was going on. No, I didn't so know. So your exactly denials were false. Had. Your denials were just pro forma denials. No, not the at all. The way you denied everything when you were in office. No, not at all. You did. You sat there denying everything. You didn't, go, you didn't know what was going on in these prisons? You didn't ask? You weren't interested? What I know is, officially, we know some of the abu abuses, and I have taken in my time some of the actions uh, to correct those things, but I didn't know that there are uh, you know, informal prisons uh, which has, has been there. The Attorney so, General said there are people that have been blinded and held in darkness for long periods of time. Others have been left infertile because of blows to their genitals. There are some that had limbs broken. Women have been subjected to gang rape and men have been sodomized. All this happened under your rule. So I ask you, aren't you ashamed that this was going on under your rule? No, I am ashamed, You're not ashamed. I am ashamed that this happened, but I didn't know those things. And if I knew those things, I would have corrected them because this is a very secret thing's happened. Well, it didn't take long for this Prime Minister to find out what was going on, so obviously he was I, looking in the I right made, place and you did I nothing. Made, you know, I you made, didn't want to look, look did you? I, I made a room for this Prime Minister to act. I struggled very hard to bring him to power. And I did everything You lost I control, can. that's why you gave up. You lost control and the party lost faith in you. That's why you gave up. No, I think you can, you can say that. But and you were struggling to control that's unrest the in the country, but that's you were failing to do that I as well. It, I did it myself. I did it intentionally because I wanted to see that this change should come. So I think this is genuinely what has happened. And I did my best in paving a way for this to happen. So I think uh, that has to be clearly recorded and... I did it. I think it would be clearly regarded when women in your prisons during your term in office were being subjected to gang rape and men to sodomization. Now that you know this, even if you say you didn't know it at the time, where's your apology to the victims? I think I have already apologized yeah, when, yeah. I, when, I say, when I resigned because that's a system which was operating have you under met, me. Have you met the victims and apologized personally to them? If there is a need to be, I will. You haven't done so, have you? I, I, have, I, I haven't get those chance, and I will. We have a, a reconciliation and truth and a reconciliation commission established, and that process is going on. How do you really sleep at night knowing that this was going on in your torture centers? carried out by your officials while you were Prime Minister. How do you sleep at night? If I knew, then I say to you that I was there to correct everything in my disposal if I knew it, but I didn't know that. that you're, I you. you're said to be a religious man from a family of Pentecostals. Is that right? That's true. How does gang rape and sodomization fit in with your religious values? No, I didn't know I said. If I knew, it doesn't fit in, in my values. But you went on denying it, denying it, denying that's it. That's the report in I have. every interview. That, that's the report I have. No Des every interview. Despite the reports There's coming no in from interview. human rights groups all over the world, which you just rubbished. You said, that's not true. They're outsiders. They're our enemies. Don't listen to them. Everything is fine, you said. I think I have never said everything is fine. You said there was no, no mistreatment. Never, you said there was no that. mistreatment going on. There is a problem, but I was saying that my report is that it's not to the extent what has been said. That's what I said. But in any case, I have a report which I was, I was giving to the public, uh, which, which was the case. Let's take another detention center, Jijiga Central Prison, otherwise known as Jail Ogaden, a regional detention center in the east of the country, administered in part by your special police. It was closed in August last year. Do you know what was going on there as well? No, I don't know. Why not? You knew the prison existed. You, no, weren't, you, I, weren't, I, I you had no curiosity. You had no curiosity, Mr. Haim Aram. You didn't want to know what was going on in your jails, did no, you? No, it's not the case. You know, uh, the regional governments have their own rights. And I think the whole thing is I uh, did my 
uh, my work according to the reports I get from my intelligence and from my sources, and therefore that's what, what was the case. People reported, there were many of the former prisoners who said they saw people dying in their cells after being tortured by officials in this Ogaden jail, as, as it was called. What should happen to the officials who carried out this torture? I mean... Uh, what should I, happen to them? They're imprisoned. That's it? Yeah. Just prison sentences? And what should happen to you for turning a blind eye to it? That depends on, on the on this legal system of the country. You know, I resign simply because to take all the responsibilities. But what is extraordinary comes. is that with all the abuses that were carried out while you were Prime Minister, you accepted from the new Prime Minister the nation's highest award for service without even blushing, without any embarrassment whatsoever. Now that you know what was going on while you were Prime Minister, why don't you give back that award? Why should I? Because I have a number of positive things I have done because in my country. Because you failed to take control. No, this is one part of it. And that's it's a huge that, that part. It. That it's a huge it. torture explain is a huge whatever part. Whatever I work within my, my country, that doesn't explain. That's not the only thing. You know, I have done many good things. There are issues in the system which are a failure, which I initiated to reform and deepen that reform because I understood that uh, the uh, age of, you know, uh, before my resignation, I understood that there are something going wrong. Therefore, I initiated this reform and then I have released 95% of those. You were, in, you were in office for six years and this new prime minister has come in and done more for human rights than you did in all the time you were there. It is because I paved the way for him. Really? The U.S. State Department in 2016 published a catalogue of the human rights abuses taking place under your rule, which of course you denied, but they're now known to be true. Arbitrary killings, disappearances, torture, harsh and life-threatening prison conditions, detention you without can, charge. You can enumerate whatever you want, but I... It's what they said. Yeah. But how can I you say that you didn't know what was going on when all these reports were out there pointing to what was yes, going on? Yes, whenever I knew that there are things going wrong, I initiated the reform, and the serious reform and deep reform, and that's the result where the Prime Minister has come as into power. You said when you resigned that you wanted to be part of the solution in Ethiopia. How can you be part of the solution when you were so much part of the problem? You know, I become part of the solution because there is a problem. Which you so created. Problem, which you created. You, you created the atmosphere, the permissive atmosphere, in which your security officials believed they could torture, that it was all right to torture, go on torturing, disappearing people, no, extrajudicial execution. That's not there. You created the atmosphere in which that was possible. No, I didn't create the atmosphere. And so what our, qualifies our legal you? And the constitutional system has been established, then anyone who's involved with it could be accounted for. But I didn't create this, uh, this uh, conducive environment for them. It is a deep system which I was not able to look into because of my background and because of my, you know, I am outsider coming into the deep system, so I couldn't see that. When Mr. Abbey came into power, he couldn't wait to condemn the legacy of your government and draw a line under your time in office, could he? April last year, he said that government, your government, had sanctioned torture of its prisoners and said it had been guilty of state terrorism. He, Not, said, he said in Parliament, does the Constitution say anyone who was sentenced by a court can be tortured, put in a dark room? That's true. It doesn't. That's true. That government was his as well, not only mine. You were the Prime Minister. I the was the Prime Minister, but he you. was there also. The buck stopped Yeah, with you. we collectively decided to reform, including him. The ultimate responsibility lay Had with not you. Had with it, you. Yeah, with you. It is. It yeah. is. It is. That's why do you try and get out of it? Why that's do you try why, and get out of it? That's why I initiated the reform. That's why I initiated the, you know, one year taken reform. Before you initiated reform. You blocked every attempt by the United Nations Special Rapporteur, the UN Human 
It you should come from us. every attempt. It should come. You know, so you had the reform should it. come uh, from us. And the only reason and you did blocked it. the I only reason it. you blocked them I from investigating you know? was because you didn't want them to find out what was going on. I did, and I initiated the reform before my resignation a year ago, and that reform is the, what resulted. Prime Minister Abiy to come to power. Hundreds and of I people did my were killed. To bring him to power. Hundreds of people were killed under your regime, and you refused to have an independent investigation led by the UN's chief human if, rights official. If you ask the killings, the last one and a half years, the number of killings surpassed in six years what happened in my time. If you ask for killings, look, that is not the case. So the whole thing is, you know. I initiated this reform and a year ago before my resignation, and I paved the way for the new system you and let some people come out. in. You say you initiated the reform. You created a regime where people were tortured and disappeared and had their rights taken away from them consistently. Tens I of have, thousands of people, I and you asked, denied it I time asked, and time again. I have asked an apology to my people that the regime has some abuses of you know, human rights and the deficit in democracy, and that has happened. I, am, and I still feel that I'm sorry for that, but I initiated that's for the much, change to come. That's not much of an apology, is it? That really isn't. That's a half-hearted apology. No, it is not. And you, you, I would you, have not resigned. You know, I could have taken it to the last as many leaders. You couldn't. The party didn't the want country. you to stay. You lost the faith no, of the party. No, I, I haven't lost the security forces. I haven't lost the army. They're all being, they're being arrested. They're being arrested. They should, no, have, been, the they should have been investigated I, under your time I, and they weren't. If I want to continue as dictators, you know, I could have used everything up to the last of my breath. So you you the always claim is a dictatorship. I, yeah, you I, always I, claimed democracy took time. You always said this is a fledgling democracy. It takes time. Exactly. This is this is what every dictator says exactly. when you they don't want you to give up power. In Europe, you yourself in Europe, you pass through a number of civil wars before you came this to the democracy. This is what every dictator it. says. It's not time. No, the no, people aren't not ready. You can't it. hurry these it things. It is not when they show. Even Europe, United States, everywhere in the Western countries, your democracy has taken time. And it has not come uh, in one shot, in one day, in one week, in one year. It has taken years to mature. That is true. And that will continue. Democracy is building democratic culture. Yeah, it's and, and you did everything to slow it down. Mr. Haile Mariam, you've never shied away from associations or friendships, either with indicted or convicted war criminals, have you? Do they hold some special fascination for you, these people? Which ones? Like Mr. al-Bashir, the former president of Sudan. In August, you posted a controversial picture on Facebook of you smiling next to Ethiopia's exiled Marxist leader Mengistu Haile Mariam. And then you took it down when there was a huge outcry because this man, of course, was uh, found guilty in absentia of genocide. By the way, I met him incidentally when uh, I was there in Zimbabwe. He was in the president's office when I was there in the president's office. Then I met him and I talked to him. So that's what happened. In any case, and you posted a comment saying, "I wish to see more former heads of government and state in my country contributing their parts in different capacity after peaceful transition of political power." No, that that was not me. It is the officers there who did it, and I say this is wrong. So you don't want Mr. Mengistu, with his conviction for genocide, to play a part in the new Ethiopia. I think if we go through uh, Truth and Reconciliation Commission, and if he's also given chance to, you know, to apologize, and then anything what the Truth and Reconciliation Commission brings into it, I think that needs, the country needs reconciliation. I have a deep belief that we need reconciliation. What matters is what's not the past, even the future. Is worrisome. The past so, matters. The, uh, genocide isn't something you matters. just you it just matters, you just flick have, away we and we pretend have to it bring didn't reconciliation happen. To, the, to my country. Explain to me, please, how a conviction for one of the most serious crimes on the planet would qualify Mr. Mengistu to, to contribute to the well-being of your country. How would how would a man with a qualification like that? 
I think it depends on how the reconciliation goes. A conviction for goes. genocide. A genocide. One of the most serious Even crimes the you can commit. Apartheid in South Africa has reconciled. Apartheid okay. isn't genocide, Mr. Heilmarin. Yeah, for you, it's not genocide. But for Africans, it is more than genocide. Where is your Truth and Reconciliation Commission? It, is, it has been established, and we'll see the result. For you, yes, apartheid is not. But for us, it is. So you're quite happy for convicted war criminals to come back to your country and play their part. Good old boys. Is, Good if old the boys. reconciliation procedure allows that, yes. If not, then no. How should future generations in Africa protect themselves from people like you? They should democratize their countries. Get rid and of dictators like you? I think uh, labeling me dictator is wrong. Is wrong. This is yours. It's not my, my people's. So I think this is misplacing again. This is rude from your side. Haile Mariam Dasalam, thank you very much for being on Conflict Zone. Thank you so much. Thank you.